Healings, greetings, greetings, amazing humans. Uh, we are going to look at uh, something called, or an operating system called DQV. Yet another uh, operating system with a name that's really, really hard to um, pronounce. Uh, naming really matters, and I'm going to talk a little bit about this and rant really, really shortly. If you want to make a distribution that are used by people outside of your native country, let me put it that way. Try and choose a name that's easy, pronounceable, and somewhat understandable by the international community. You know, like uh, Mate is a really, really good example that mates, Mate, you know, it's not really that thought out about, you know, so there's a lot of confusing people are memeing on it and stuff like that. It will just help you out if you have a name that kind of makes sense for let's say english speaking people or you know they they pick the one of the top two most spoken languages in the world and then find a name that kind of makes sense for both of them are easy pronounceable for those people and and are easily understandable this here again eqv or qa or dqa don't really know what it is don't even know the name but let, let's go on to the website and get a little introduction they they do give us some lofty uh Goals here. Dikuwe is your fa fi future favorite desktop operating system. Um, yeah, well, why not? And here's the thing: you can't get this version here right now. It looks a little bit like GNOME with some extra uh, theming and stuff like that. But um, it's sort of I'm on the XFCE version here right now. Uh, here you can see I'm on the XFCE version. Uh, a few words, they are non-profit, they, they actually are doing some quite good things, you know, like, oh shit, uh, there you go. And and you can see here, friendly, you know, the, this looks a little bit like a cooker cooker -co -co website, but that's okay, you know, quick five, again, in this version here, I don't have access to. Showcase the version you have, uh, people have access to, and then keep this as a teaser, you know, later down the line. Uh, at your accounts, again, we can't use this. <laughs> um, your favorite apps, uh, your goal, our, um, our global importance and missions. So I kind of like here that they care about the environments uh, and they want to support low income people, small businesses, educational. Like they have some lofty goals, you know, they, they have some amazing goals. And I kind of like this here that they're thinking about the environment, they're doing it for the low income people and stuff like that. These are admirable things to do, let's be honest. Like, it's stuff that most people should care about. I like that. And then the team, it looks like it, it, it's two, uh, a two-person um, team here. So, the base. Let, let, let's talk about the base. The good old base. It's all about the base. I think it should be... It, it's uh, Debian. Oh, they are... Yo, they are on Debian, but they're using the latest long-term release. The next thing I'm going to do right now is we're going to install the system, then we're looking over the UI elements, how it's set up and stuff like that. Then we're going to look in at software, if there's any software specific things, you know, where do they pull down the, um, the, the packages from, do they have their own repos and so on and so on. And we're looking a little bit at, at the packages and then some ending thoughts. So let, let's just go into the installer and I, oh, it's, it's the Calamouse. I was about to say, I suspect that they use the Calamouse installer. And they're defaulting to American English. It is version 0 0.1. So I, I kind of am curious how old this distribution is. Let's click next. Oh, it didn't find my localization. So let's do Copenhagen. A Danish keyboard. I will erase the disk. And basically just use everything. And it's making a swap partition. And let's make our good old username. And the 123456 amazing password. There you go. Click next, summary, install. The Calamouse installer is straightforward. One thing I would say about Linux right out of the bat is that I feel Linux is way easier to install than Windows or Mac OS. Uh, maybe not Mac OS. So I would just shut up and watch some YouTube while this is installing. This would not take long. So we are uh, again here. It's actually in. Is this Russian, Portuguese? Is it in... I don't know what language this is in, but it's definitely not in English, though. That's not good. Because I chose American English. So I want American English when I'm in the crop menu. And here we are, again, 
taste is subjective. I kind of like this look. Uh, I'm, I'm a little bit like more in, I can tolerate it than I, oh my God, I love it. But I, I do like it uh, for what it is. So let, let's put my massive, amazingly creative name in and password and press enter. We probably need to update it. So here we are. Let, let, let's look a little bit about the default layout here. The, it, it's Mac OS. They want to be Mac OS or they want to mimic Mac OS. Uh, I do, however, feel that they're doing just enough to set themselves aside for Mac OS. So let, let's open up all these programs down here to see what they're all about. So being based on Debian, you of course get access to the Debian repositories. It looks like it's it's doing what it says on the tin. I can't really fault much uh, about, is that Telegram? Uh, Mellow Player? Yeah, like like I said, I, I just opened up a shit ton of programs here to see how they, 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 you know, oh, here we have a problem. This is what I was looking for. Is there a theming dis disparency with what they are going for here and, and VLC is using QT if I'm not mistaken. So they don't have like Quantium or something like that set up to handle QT applications. So you, you get a little bit of a theming disparency here. And of course there are updates. We don't want to view them now. I, I, I should update it. This should be upgrading in the back. And, and, and it looks like they're using Xterm, right? No, no, no. They are using the XFC term. They just highly customized it. I, I, I don't mind that. So there you go, that, that can go down. So, so what I was saying is that you get a little bit of, of, of a um, theming disparency here. Let, let's look a little bit about what kind of theme that they actually are using. Appearance. So they're using their own theme, which I think is just a modified version of an existing theme from Gnome Looks and stuff like that. I don't think they did everything from the Quam dot up. Some people may like this, some people may not like this. I, I, like I said, I'm a little bit in... in I kind of like it. <laughs> I'm not not like massively a fan of it, but I kind of like it. I, I can see this being something you would give people and, and they would be like, yeah, this is actually really neat. You know, I, I dig this. And they don't use transparency, you know. Do I need to pixel hunt to resize? Yeah, so, yeah, okay. This is not a good theme, people. If I need to pixel hunt to resize down here or over here, this theme is not good. Try and get, you know, a, a not so computer, how, is, how, how do, can you say it in a nice way? Try, try to get a, a person that are not that versed and, and comfortable using a mouse, trying to resize this window down here. Let, let's even close this one here just to make it more easy on us. Try and make your sister, brother, grandmother do uh, resize this window here. This is not good. This is bad UI design. Again, they, they, they're going a little bit for, for a beauty over function, it looks like. This can't be fixed in the theme. This is a theming issue. Because there's a lot of themes that actually do this right, where you just do go up here and you can now resize. So what I'm seeing from a UI perspective, at least under the XFCE version, is that, that let's go down here, it's Definitely not good for these people here, because I I bet my my boss and my my co-workers they don't want to sit here and uh, also here it works fine under Firefox, but if they are under the uh, file manager they don't want to sit here and pixel hunt. So fix the theme. I think that's the the the, the biggest thing that I can say is that the theme needs to be fixed because they need to do something about this pixel hunting here. It do work under Firefox, it don't work under XFCE. It does work under Qt applications. It don't work under Xterm. So this means basically that, that the theme that they base their theme on is probably a GNOME only theme or a theme built to work best under GNOME. XFCE file manager I think is still using TTK2 or something like that on, on older library version of TTK. So that's why you get these uh, problems here. Fix that, people. That's it. And the upgrade actually succeeded. Let's look a little bit about the software. We already talked a little bit about them using VLC and stuff like that. 
One thing here that I don't like is that they're defaulting to this iCloud. I don't even know what it is here. It is I okay? So it's basically oh, this could be a uh, ice uh, plugin built with the native filer. Okay, so I su suspect this is an application, kind of like what ice is for peppermint, where you you go in and you can basically take web pages and make them into desktop applications. So think about Alex one, really really simplified. I don't know why you want people to use iCloud. <laughs> Uh, the people that need iCloud, they already know how to access iCloud from from uh, from the browser uh, from Windows because that's how most people will access their iCloud is via Firefox, Chrome, or Edge. So this is really not needed, and it's confusing people a little bit in in the term that they see that pin down here and they're like, "Oh, do I need iCloud?" And you don't. Also, let's see if this uh, if this is a panel or. Okay, so it is stock. So if I hold down control and right click, yep. So this is uh, plank. It's an easy way to figure out if it's plank or not. If that, if you hold down control and right click, you should get the settings options for plank. That's how I normally go in and see. Oh, is this plank? So we can now go in here and we can customize the living shit out of this. So if I, I wanted, you know, something like this, let's just keep it default here and, and you can go in here and do whatever you want with it but again control right click and you get the plank uh, options here and of course they're using the whisker menu and I, I just want to see if they are using anything that you probably will not get by default so i won't go over to everything okay so we are getting quitter don't know why you would do that but yeah okay uh, the mat say calculator hmm. yeah so they're not really in a stays is also something that you normally would not see in a, in a program. Oh, sorry, on a distribution. Yeah, so you're not really getting anything massively different. So what I want to do right now is I want to install Synaptic. And why do I want to do that? Well, it's, it's an easier way to look at the repositories and see what actually comes in those repositories. So if you go down to Origins, you can now see what repositories they're using. So they're using the Debian Multimedia. They are, ooh, so they are having an open source of repository here, basically from the open build system. It don't look like they are using any of their own repositories. This is all stock standard with, okay, uh, unstable. So they are backporting in, I think, unstable. I want to see their uh, app uh, source file right now. So they are using stable. Oh wait, wait, Bullseye! I can't remember what I can't remember the release um, name of Debian Ten. Buster, there you go, Buster. Okay, I, I was confu getting confused here. So what they are doing is that we are basically on Debian testing, which is actually really good in my opinion because it's a semi-rolling release. You get newer software. But they also backport again something from SIT. And this is where it gets a little bit more scary and a little bit more... You should not do that if... If your target is these groups down here. Because with SIT you could end up getting into situations where you have to manually intervene. Uh, the same with, with boss, uh, uh, the, uh, the testing uh, or, or bullseye, which will become Debian 10 when it comes out. If you're running Debian testing, it's inefficiently a rolling release, and a lot of new people to an operating system have a little bit hard time with rolling releases. I would say if you just stayed with, with bullseye or on the testing uh, branch, that would be fine. But starting to mix in SIT, which is it's not that testing, it's that development branch. You are now opening you up to a shit ton of vulnerabilities and a shit ton of instability. Because SIT is not security tested. It's where packages come from the package developers and then Debian people test them. And when, when they are almost ready to be released, they go into the testing branch where they get tested by us and of course the development team, but they get thoroughly tested, like massively tested. And if they've been stable and, 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 and stuff like that in the testing repositories for X amount of time, 
they could potentially be rolled over into the stable uh, repository. Again, roughly speaking, really generalized, like they don't do that for desktop environments and stuff like that, but you get what I'm saying here. Bullseye is stable, but they don't focus on security as much as they do with the stable brands. So by using Debian testing and Debian sit, where I saw something about security down here. Yeah, here, you're kind of going a little bit against this here. Because Debian stable is highly security tested. Debian testing, not so much. Debian sys, almost not at all. So this is counter uh, predicting itself. Not that good. If you want to boast that you're a secure platform, go use Debian Stable or an Ubuntu base because Ubuntu also do their own security testing to some extent, even though they take packages from SID and, and testing. This is not good. Uh, this is like, yeah, I, I don't like this. They, they need to fix this. Either they need to go stable or they should just say that, well, they should just remove this. If, uh, I need to make a video about this because this is so misleading that it's not even funny. But anyway, it kind of goes a little bit against them focusing on security. They want to focus on security. That's what this tells me that one of their main focus is security. If your main focus is security, or not main focus, but one of your big focuses is security. You can't use it and you can't use the testing brands under Debian. I'm sorry to say it, but you can't. I would say you could get away with testing. But sit. that's just a ticking time bomb security device. That, that's actually, sit is where they find bugs and security measures. You know, you use sit if you want to contribute back to Debian as a tester. I don't know if they do that to get the newer kernel or what it is, but yeah. And, and, and talking about them wanting to use this as a um, jump in system for newcomers and educational systems and stuff like that. You should just be running stable. They don't want to deal with uh, unstable updates that you could get with SID or security uh, problems or bug problems and stuff like that. Especially the educational and, and, and business uh, world. They want predicti uh, pr predictability, pr predictability, I think that's the word, and convenience and stability and security over anything else. That's why you see a lot of businesses running really, really, in quotes, outdated software, but it's highly stable, it's highly tested, it high, it's highly security patched. They want that more than the latest and greatest. That's why we have Ubuntu LTS and Ubuntu Server and stuff like that. It's because that makes sense for the corporate world. So, so what do I think about this here? Well, I kind of like what they're trying to do. They're just you know, uh, tweak the theme a little bit, go to Debian test, a stable, if you really want to go into the business world, and even if it's small businesses, companies don't want to deal with rolling releases, that's why Ubuntu don't have a rolling release, that's why Leap is not a rolling release, that's why all manufacture uh, dis distribution makers that are making distributions for the corporate world are not rolling releases. And it's also why they are using a little bit outdated programs because they are stability testing them to high heaven and back and they are security testing them to high heaven and back because that's what the corporate world care about that's what the uh, educational system care about if you're just targeting me <laughs> you know the hobby yes the the desktop users at home that already are interesting and know a little bit about linux this is fine there's not much more to say about this other than if you like this uh, we, uh, Linux, or not Linux, but Mac paradigm here with the global menu and how it looks up here. Yeah, you can go and use this. You you can go and use this and it didn't even, uh, uh, right now they actually have better weather in Ukraine than I have here. The only thing you get here, I will say, is that you get an easy way to install Debian testing. See you all later. Bye bye.